Hi, it's Ursula from EasyScraps.com and today I'm going to be doing a follow-up video to um, another one that I did about scanning in your original artwork and then bringing it into Photoshop. I do this all the time with my original artwork and um, so all my videos will kind of have that bent to them. There's tons of videos out there, tons of books related to using Photoshop with, for instance, photographs and things like that. Um, and there's th those books and videos are a lot better <laughs> than mine are going to be. Um, but I'm really kind of using my videos to talk about how I use Photoshop with original artwork. And so the first one that I did talked about how I take my art and scan it in and now that it's been scanned as a digital file I can bring it into Photoshop and manipulate it. So just so that you know I use Photoshop CS5. For this lesson it doesn't really matter um, what version of Photoshop that you're using. Some of the lessons that I plan on making will use tools and features that are only available in CS5 and so in those videos I will call them out but for right now uh, most versions of Photoshop will be fine. So this is an image that I had scanned in and I want to talk a little bit about layers because in Photoshop that's one of the really great features about working within Photoshop especially as a photo editor. Photoshop Elements has a similar set of features um, as does the um, Paint Shop Pro that's now put out by Corel uh, and that is the ability to have multiple layers. Why this is important is rather than just being able to edit a single image you can actually bring in multiple images layer them over each other you can tweak things like opacity and blending modes and you can create an entirely new image just from the the different layers of the images that you've brought into Photoshop so we're going to explore layers a little bit. I also want to talk about the history palette in Photoshop because it lets you undo multiple actions that maybe you screwed something up and you want to go back. So that's what this mini lesson will be concentrating on. So I'm going to start the same way that I start every project. I always go through the same set of steps so that I can protect my original image. I open up my scanned in image in Photoshop and then rather than going to town and doing what I want to write on this opened image I'm actually gonna make a copy of it. In Photoshop there's actually multiple ways you can accomplish the same thing. Uh, th these are the steps that I always follow. If you do something different to save a copy or um, you know make copies that's fine but these are the steps that I always do it's the way that I started off doing it and I just kind of continued and did the same thing over and over so what I do is I open up my scanned in image I come up to select and I do select all then I come over to edit and I do edit copy so now what I'm doing is I'm copying this image to the clipboard now I'm done with this file I'm gonna close it it's going to say, do you want to save changes? I actually do not because this is my original scanned in image and I want to leave it untouched just in case I want to do multiple things with it or in case I totally mess up what I'm doing, I want to be able to go back to that original scanned in image. So I'm going to say no and it's going to close out that file. And now I'm going to create a new file or new image. So I'm going to come up to File, New, and I have decided that I'm going to create a file that's 8.5 8 by 11 inches. And here we come back to our discussion on resolution. I know my printer is 300 
pixels per inch. So I'm going to make my Photoshop file match the resolution of my printer. And I'm also going to choose the size of the paper that I'm going to ultimately print out at, which is 8.5 by 11. If I want, I can save this preset so that I can always pick that same setup from now on. And it will show up here in this preset pull down. I've already created one that's basically the same thing. So I can choose that preset rather than having to set that by hand every single time. So now I'm going to go ahead and create my new file. It's 8.5 by 11 in 300 dpi. And I've also set it so that the background is transparent. If you see this little checkerboard, it means there's no color on this layer. So I have one layer with ba basically nothing on it. I can come back up here to edit and choose edit paste and it's going to paste the image from my clipboard onto my new image or my new file. And I can come up here and choose file save as and I can save my work into a Photoshop file. I'm going to choose the extension PSD. That's the Photoshop format and I'm going to just name it whatever. And the reason I'm saving it as a Photoshop file is so that it will preserve my layers. Right now I only have one layer but as we start working on this file I'm going to end up with multiple layers and that Photoshop format will preserve the layers as separate layers rather than merging them all into a single layer. Um, it will preserve the layers as I work on them. So right now I have one layer. The second step that I always do in my sequence is I duplicate that original layer. So I can come up to layer and say duplicate, duplicate layer and say woman copy. Now I come back over to the layer palette and now you see I have two layers. The original and then a copy of that original layer. I'm going to go over here to the eyeball icon which shows, you know, hides or shows a particular layer and I'm going to turn off the visibility of my original layer. And I always do that just in case I want to go back and either do a comparison or go back and start over and grab that original image. So from now on, the work that I'm going to be doing is going to be on the copy of the original layer. So say I decide that I'm going to paint. I've decided I want to paint around this woman. So I can come down here to my foreground and background color and I'm choosing a red color as my foreground. I can come up to the paintbrush tool and I can choose there's all kinds of different paintbrushes that you can use and we're not going to really pay that much attention to them today so I'm just going to choose a paintbrush. And I can come over here and start painting. Actually maybe I want to make it a little bit smaller and I can come over here and start painting. So if you look over at this layer, what I've now done is I've painted on that copied layer. Now here's the thing. I try not to do anything that I would consider destructive um, I don't know if destructive is necessarily really the right term, but um, I've now changed this layer basically for good. And if I decide that I want to get rid of that paint, that paint is now on this layer. It's going to be very hard for me to do that. I could come in and erase it. Let's choose a bigger erase brush. I could come over here and erase it, but look what happens when I start erasing. I'm actually erasing 
part of my layer. So if that paint is over the woman, in order to get rid of the paint, I'd actually be getting rid of some of the woman as well. So now I've decided, oh, you know what? I really didn't want to do that. So because I'm not too far into my project, I can actually come up here to my history palette. And my history palette keeps track of the different actions that I've taken. So if you look at my history palette, I've created a new image. I pasted an image as a layer. I've duplicated that layer. And now I've gone in and used the brush tool to paint and the eraser tool to erase. And I've decided now I don't want to do that. So one thing that I can do is I can click up into my history palette and get rid of certain actions. So if I click up one, it gets rid of my eraser. If I click up two, it gets rid of both the brush and the eraser. So I can basically undo not just one action, which in most pieces of software you can accomplish by doing either Edit, Undo, or Control Z. But with a history palette, I can go back up all, actually all the way to the beginning if I wanted to. And in this case, I just want to get rid of the brush, you know, the painting, and the eraser. So I'm just going up to the duplicate layer. Okay. So now if I do anything else, these two history states, the brush and the eraser, will be lost. But that's okay because I'm, I didn't want to do that to begin with anyway. All right, so now really, truly, I decided I do want to paint on you know, my, my ultimate image. But rather than painting directly on the layer that has my sketch on it, I can come up and create a new empty layer. So I come up to Layer, New, oops, Layer, and let's call it Paint. So now, if you look at our history, our layer palette, I have a layer, I have the original layer, which the visibility is turned off. I have the copy of that original, which is the sketch. And now I have an empty blank layer called Paint that has nothing on it right now. But if I come up to my Paint tool, I can come over and start painting. Now, though, because I've painted on a separate layer, and that layer is sitting on top of the sketch, it looks similar to what we did initially, but here's the thing. I can turn off the visibility of that paint layer and go back to just the sketch. So anytime I'm doing painting, especially painting, I try to do it on a separate layer because then I can turn that layer, the visibility of that layer, on and off. I could actually delete the layer completely without ruining my artwork layer. Okay, So an important feature of having separate layers is I can separate my images. The other important feature to talk about with layers is the order of layers. So right now I'm going from top to bottom. So the paint layer is on the top and it's sitting on top of the sketch, the woman. If I take this layer, I could come up here and say layer, arrange, send backward. That took that paint layer and pushed it underneath the sketch. And because my sketch is an opaque image, it's hiding because it's sitting on top of and it's larger than the image that's on my paint layer. If I decided, oh, you know what, I really didn't want to do that, I could either undo, going back to my history palette, I could go back and do layer, arrange, bring to front or bring forward, 
or I can take this layer in the layer palette and just drag it above the sketch and now my paint layer is back on top. So I can drag my layer order around to get different images. The other thing that I can do with my layers is I can change the opacity. So say I decided I love this red but I don't really want it completely hiding the sketch that's underneath. I can come to this paint layer and select it and then come over here and change the opacity. So if you look the paint is getting a little more transparent. And so now I can actually see through the paint to the sketch below. Now let's go ahead and add another new layer. And I can double click on the name and actually change the name of it. So let's call it Paint 2. And again, it's a, just a blank layer at this point. So let's change color of our paint. Let's go to green, maybe. So I still have my paintbrush selected. And now I can come up onto this new layer and paint some more. And then if I don't like it, I can turn the visibility on. If I decide that I want to change, actually let's do something. Let's go. If I want to change the order, I could actually push this underneath the red paint. And right now it's a little bit hard to see that it's actually under the red paint because the red paint is a little more transparent. So I could go back and select that red paint layer and move the opacity all the way up again. And now the red paint is sitting on top of the green paint which is sitting on top of the sketch. I could take the green paint and move it underneath the sketch, but the only thing that's going to show is the part of the green paint that's not hidden by the sketch. So I could actually stay on this layer, choose my paintbrush, and paint around. And again, anything that's not covered by the sketch is going to show. I could go back to the sketch and actually change the opacity of that. And if I make that a little more transparent, now I can actually see the layer underneath, which is the green paint, through the sketch. And so just in this manner, you can create all new artwork just by combining different layers, playing around with the order of those layers, and playing around with the opacity of those layers. So I hope this has been helpful to you. I hope you have a good understanding of layers and the history palette. This concludes our mini lesson on how to bring in a scanned image, create a copy of it, create layers that can interact with each other. And again, we saved it as a file. I'm going to come up here and save my work. And now if I ever open this file again, it's going to open up with all these layers intact because I saved it as a Photoshop file. Thanks for joining me today and we'll see you next time.